here we have our empty 2d urp setup so first of all let's start by setting up our folders let's bring in the images we need borders so that collision can occur on four sides right uh, we need this pocket so that it can detect collision with the pucks and so that we can collect the pucks when they collide with it but at the same time it should not it should avoid collision or it should not detect the collision with the striker so, and the striker should be able to collide with borders and move around we need a slider over here we will be using slider so that we can reposition the striker in our home lane like we might try to click drag and we will also show the aim that's in which direction could proceed the striker and also uh, based on the draw how much power would be applied so basically uh, we need colliders which would be invisible we need pockets which should detect collision so we will make collider as a trigger but that too will not be visible pucks are here and our striker should be there and for detection we will be using tag to this let's arrange Now we have the board. Now let's first create the border colliders. They are not visible, but still they would be available in the gameplay for collision. We need to create the pucks, same mechanism. So as we said we have borders and pockets for detection and each of the pockets are triggered in each of the colliders. Now let me bring in the puck. I'll select all of them. So this is something that we will take into account when we have a collision with the pockets. Now let's move and make this a back up. That's it. Let's say we duplicate a white.
there is one more way you can simply drag and drop this striker here We have our slider, we have our box, and we have our striker. Now let's start pocket collision with puck. In this method, we will look for whether the collision object has the tag puck. So if we have the tag, a valid collision then simply hide it we need to make sure that our bugs all have this particular tag and we also need to assign it here now the easier and quickest way instead of assigning to each of these pockets you will select the pocket prefab and for testing we will simply drag one of the bugs to the pockets and let's see what happens when it collides so there you go, it got disabled. That's all we need to do with the pockets. Now let's start with the striker. So for striker, the first thing is uh, we need uh, to define our home lane. That is the range on the left side and the right side. So that when you move this slider, our striker moves within and remains within the lane. Uh, 1.28 would be the extremes on the X so let's create a script now we need a reference of our slider so that we can pass this values to the sliders uh, maximum and min value so that it can control this position Now we need to listen to the event whenever the value changes. So we need to update the position of our striker. So on value changed. We move the slider. It will reorient it within the home lane. Go back. Select our striker and assign the reference. Now let's get back and start coding for aim and power. Now we make a physics recast and select whether we have hit our striker or not. So first of all, uh, we need a position, mouse position, right? So let's declare a variable.
can aim Oops. we can aim and we are being dragged we need the direction and the drop that is how much we pull it and what direction that is we need to shoot the striker opposite uh, in the opposite direction that we are dragging If the draw determines the threshold, what we need is body dot add force. Add the force in the direction of the opposite direction of the draw times the draw length and times some power. So let's, let's declare this and let's reset the draw length just now. And simply reset the draw length that's it but now we need to assign our striker to uh, a layer called striker and we need to set that layer mask here so that the raycast uh, collision can happen and moving that one more thing let's say when we are sliding we can we should reset the forces reset forces let's do that because now we have the reference of the rigid body so in reset forces what we will do is Now simply let's check whether we need this layer for that we need to introduce and add it So as soon as this uh, stops, it should get reset. See, we got reset. So now let's see if I move here. Now one more thing. See, while while moving, see, you are able to control. So this should not happen. So if it is motion, we need to disable our slider. The slider should only 
but when is your input and it's zero so this is disabled no then stops it is the number okay so that is all okay. I hope you like this video and we will come up with some new features and some improvements with this that is like it could be extended to four two player stuff that is turn based uh, multiplayer let's say there could be particle systems and trail and enhance this game movement right there could be menu and a lot more stuff let's see how this works